We are now prepared to go into the next question, which is what is the New Testament? And as we uh, deal with this question, like the Old Testament that we dealt with, this phraseology is dominantly used two ways. It can, in fact, describe the 27 books of the New Testament, and it also speaks to the covenant ratified by the death of Jesus Christ by which you and I receive the forgiveness of our sins. Let's first talk about the 27 books of the New Testament. We find when we read these books, they unfold for us the ministry of Jesus Christ in which he died, was buried, and rose again the third day. And his resurrection, of course, is the bedrock of the Christian faith. Paul says, if there is no resurrection of Christ, then our preaching and our faith is in fact fruitless. But it is important for us to recognize that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give us insight into the ministry of Jesus from four perspectives. We find that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are often called synoptic gospels because they see Jesus from a similar vantage point, while John looks at him from a very unique perspective in which John the theologian helps us to understand that Jesus Christ was the Word made flesh. He was, in fact, God. And so as we read through the remainder of the New Testament, we see the expansion of the kingdom of God. The book of Acts provides us with the beginning of the New Testament church as we get to witness the gospel moving from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. We have also epistles that were targeted to very specific church communities and address very critical issues. And then we have general epistles as, as well that were not written to very specific communities, but were to a larger constituents of children of God, Christians that were located in various places. And so we have specific epistles, we have general epistles, and then we have this great book that we call the Book of Revelation that is an apocalyptic literature that ultimately shows that Christians would be victorious over the persecution that they were experiencing. So you and I, as we read through the New Testament, we get a good understanding of the apostles' doctrine, the faith once delivered unto the saints. The other way that we understand the phrase New Testament is again, that which was ratified by Jesus Christ, the new covenant by which we receive the forgiveness of our sins. It is prophetically announced in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34, where God said, I will make a new covenant. And ultimately through this new covenant, God says, I will remember your sins no more. And we understand and know that that is accomplished through the work of Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the New Testament books, we're clear that the New Testament books unfold for us the Apostles' Doctrine. And of course, we know that the New Covenant was ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ. These are both ways by which we can understand the phrase New Covenant or New Testament. So I want you to enjoy this chapter, enjoy what it is going to give you and help you to understand as you as a child of God recognize that we are governed by the New Testament and we get insight into the Apostles Doctrine and we recognize these 27 books of the New Testament to be authoritative and gives us insight into the life of the New Testament Church. Enjoy this chapter and I'll see you at the next question.